Good to see you and thank you for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. It's the last one for the week. We promise to make it worth your while. I'm Yemi Adebaya. Well, of course, the Euro Championships, we get all stuck in. Uh, of course, interesting games we've seen, interesting matches uh, we've, we've witnessed uh, in Germany as uh, uh, the best of football is on display. Currently, Spain, uh, sorry, currently uh, the Netherlands battling it out with France. Uh, and of course, we'll give you um, what's happening with that. We'll try to be your eyes and your ears, letting you know what's happening in those places as we speak. We'll also talk about things happening on the, the domestic scene. We'll attempt to do a post-mortem, even though we have um, one set of matches for everybody, but we'll do a post-mortem. We have a champion already, and we have a prominent figure uh, when we talk about um, reportage of sports in Nigeria. We'll be talking to him. I won't let it cut out of the bag just yet, but hopefully it will come true for us, and we will have that conversation. And, of course, we will also take a look at Copa, America, Argentina, uh, a winning start for the RB Celeste. We'll talk about all of that, all for you. Uh, my colleague Austin Okonakwan is suited and ready as we go on this trip together. What a great things to you, Yemi, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action packed to all the sports. Things are getting intense at the Euros, and I'm so loving it, Yemi. What a story. Austria, I remember when we were previewing the Euros, I said that's one team we should look out for because Ralph Rangnick seemed to be doing a good job with that team. But for that own goal, maybe France would have, you know, run with that win. And before the Euros commenced, they were on a seven unbeaten run, I think, yeah. And so they came into that with this sort of vigor. This were not a smart team mentality. And they proved that against Poland. So they're winning by three goals to one. But then again, tomorrow, it will really get us talking because Belgium must win or go home. All right. Belgium must win or go home. Interesting things uh, to talk about. Uh, I'm going to quickly introduce uh, our guest in the Lagos uh, studio. Uh, Baba Jide Oreva joins us um, this lovely Friday evening and he's here to talk sports. Baba Jide, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show Thank tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Yemi. Um, you know, this weekend is just amazing. We have... Um, the um, Euros going on. We have the Copa America also. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, we will have um, the final games of the NPFL, mm -hmm. and um, of course, the African um, Senior Athletics also happening over the weekend. So it's an. Are we it's also a, looking forward to the Olympics? It, it's just a massive um, weekend that mm -hmm. we are going in, into, and I, I love the fact that Euro has started well. And um, although it's been bizarre, you you don't want to imagine of 18 games you are seeing. Um, five own goals already and um, it tells you a lot and you also see the pattern of football right now I don't know if it's technology anyway but you see um, France they are struggling they, they struggled they had to um, escape Austria with a, oh, an goal, yeah. with, with an own goal and now they are struggling again against the Netherlands even with all the star studded players that they have so it's just a beautiful period to watch, to enjoy football. Yes, it is a beautiful period to enjoy uh, football. We're going to start differently uh, on the show tonight. I'll yield to Austin. Baba Jide has talked about it. So let's go to Douala Cameroon and uh, talk about uh, the, uh, of course, Africa Senior Athletic Championship and the man that will get us talking, the man that will get our attention, Chukwe Buka Enelkoichi, is the man in the news. And as we prepare for the Olympics, it's good news for Team Nigeria. Yeah, that's what it is, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, I like what Chukwebuka Inekwechi is doing. I spoke to him right after that disappointing outing at the Commonwealth Games, and he said that he will pick it up again. And I think he's done just that, producing new season best, staying consistent with his throws. And these are the sort of things we need to see just before the Olympics. Not just Chukwebuka Inekwechi. I'd like to see what the other guys can do, uh, particularly as we get ready for the Olympics, but with the senior Africa Championship, you know Nigeria will definitely bust that. And everyone cannot wait for us to see what the real actors on the track will do. But with Chukwe Buka and what he has done, I think it's time for us to start looking more at the field events, see how we can start winning medals through them. 
on the screen now and give our viewers a confirmation of what the young man did. Shot put gold uh, is what's on the table for him, for Nigeria. Uh, so just quickly go across and uh, the, the, the import of it. I want, I, I want to um, allow it to sink in for our viewers and that's it. Africa Athletics Championship and equity winning gold in the men's ch shot put right there in Douala. Cameroon and it's good news as we prepare for uh, the Olympics. All right, so uh, let's leave athletics. Uh, this year we'll have a lot of time for athletics, especially now that we're approaching uh, the Olympics less than uh, just roughly over a month. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, that. All right, let's talk about the Confederation of African uh, Football. Um, they had a meeting and uh, they're set to announce dates for the 2025 African Cup of Nations after the meeting that uh, they had. And also one of the things that came out of the meeting, women's um, African Cup of Nations also being postponed to uh, July. Also, let me quickly allow you to react to those two issues so we can discuss about it and, and bring Baba Jide in uh, as well, uh, the postponement of the WAFCON and also um, the dates uh, to be set for uh, the 2025 AFCON. So, Yami, mean, when I saw this story, I was like, gracious goodness, what's wrong with the leadership of football in Africa? Like, what is exactly the problem? They should all come out with their hands on their faces covered and apologize for this gaffe. With what we achieved with women's football in Africa at the last edition of the WAFCON, this is the least news we should be getting. Did they not know? Was this not part of their plans? Is it not supposed to be in the calendar? What is the problem with us consolidating on wins in Africa? What is the problem with sustaining the momentum? How do they want these women to feel? Some people are actually looking forward to it, to use it to get ready for a lot of things. Some people feed through these tournaments. You see, I struggle because at the end of the day, you brought up these folks and nothing will change. So I'm waiting for CAF to still explain how they made this, this pass. Because... I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like we're going to wait till 2025 before we have the African Women's Cup of Nations, and African football is growing. We watch, we saw the Bafana, Bafana, the Super Falcons, and Zambia do at the last World Cup. Is this how to consolidate? It's tough. Like they will come out now, and the major reason they will, they will give is oh because of the disruption that happened to the Afcon, or they will cite commercial reasons. But I struggle to understand it. This is why I struggle to talk about it. I couldn't even call any of the persons I know in CAF because I would sound almost rude. I, it, it, it's 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 sad, yeah. I mean, this is really sad that they're doing this to women. They're doing this to. Everyone is championing equality all over the world, trying to see how we can bring the game to parity. We were celebrating what we saw in Morocco, and we're looking forward to this WAFCON. I knew they weren't going to find a date to slot it in. So right after the AFCON, they should have just come out to say something. They should have just owned their shame. They should just try to find ways to, to solve this problem, because... They lack good PR it's because they know that they don't value what the women are doing. It's because they just want to look away. That's why they left it till this point. And it's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Yes. And I'm waiting for a proper apology from CAF to women all over Africa and everyone supporting women's football in Africa that they are very sorry for their incompetence, for not considering equality, for not empowering the women and just try not to repeat this horrible mistake again. I hope you get that apology, Austin. I hope you do. Uh, but Babaji, quickly, I don't, sometimes I try to play devil's advocates, you know, um, well, 2024 was already on the overload, you know, so maybe that could be the reason. But then again, like Austin said, you had the calendar, you knew all the major sporting events that could happen. You know, I, I really don't know what the explanation would be. Uh, 
But w w would you say it's because women's football has not gotten the kind of recognition? You know, I, we're also talking about the 2025 AFCON as well, dates uh, to be set. You know, does it look like the administrators of football on the continent, do, do, do they have their priorities right? Do they have their ducks in a row? Okay, so um, like Austin said, there should be apology from CAF to the, to the women. However, if you observe what happened in January during AFCON, the men's AFCON in January, February, you saw the balls. And I put this to you, Yemi, this is not a prediction. CAF might struggle to actually host or determine dates for the next AFCON because you, we have the Euros right now and you knew what happened. You, you, you felt it, you saw the aura, the, the atmosphere, how it was during AFCON. So now it's not just CAF because now African football is global and um, the world wants to see what's happening in Africa. So you don't just want to disrupt what will happen around the world as well. Um, like Austin said, we, we saw what Nigeria did, Bafana, Bafana, Zambia, and we also saw these teams, these female players at the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. So you know that these guys are out there. And CAF needs to understand that this is African football. You need to manage. Um, Mosepe needs to understand that this is our own, and you need to post it when you need to host. No need for um, outside um, influence. Influence, because but I know, I was telling a friend the other day that Afcon. I'm not sure. It will be difficult for CAF to actually set the date because if the date clashes with any league around the world, they would. That league would because Africans any now major are beginning to understand that this is our own football. CAF. African football is just out there now. So it might be difficult for CAF to actually, there are lots of things, adverts, there are A lots lot of, of issues, I get lots, you. Yes, so. All right, All right. Uh, hopefully that will be uh, sorted up. I promised earlier that we're gonna have um, a robust conversation around the Nigeria Premier uh, Football League and we were hoping to get a prominent figure when it comes to sports reporter in Nigeria and we have him now. Uh, of course we have um, uh, a veteran sports journalist, uh, content provider, somebody who needs little or no introduction when it comes to football on the domestic scene. China Cheru joins us now. Greetings to you, China. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Greetings to a ple pleasure is mine. All right. Um, <laughs> let me just throw this at you. The season gone by, um, your thoughts? I, I know it appears like a vague question, but just looking at this, we have a champion now, one set of match uh, for everybody uh, left to play, but looking at this season, what are the things that readily comes to mind for you? It was a relatively good season, right? Really, relatively good season. At first, we thought probably Remo Stars, Aimba will take the title, maybe Rivers United. Rivers United they fell out after their CAF Confederation Cup troubles. The Rangers went on a streak, five-game winning streak. I think that was seven or eight matches unbeaten. And they came into contention. And of course, everything turned on its head in that big game between Rangers and Aimba and Enugu, and that was when Aimba fell off. I think it was a great season. Lots of fancy play from Aimba, from Rangers, from Remo Stars. Um, lots of fancy play. Uh, we saw a few things that, you know, we we'll, we'll, we'll wouldn't talk about in the Nigerian League, like the game between, uh, um, I think that was Aimba and Doma United in Abba. Also, that was the game between Rivers United and Doma United in Podakot. There are a few games that um, had things that we wouldn't like to talk about, but generally, it was a great league. Um, was the champions in Rangers? I would have loved to see a photo finish between Rangers and Aimba, but like I said, after that Toronto derby, Aimba fell off. And Rangers, you know, took the shine. So great season so far, but still lots to play for. Second place, third place, and relegation fights. Still lots to play for. All right, uh, let, let me just throw one in then. Of course, my colleague Austin uh, will ask you a few more uh, questions as well. Um, China, do, do you think, I don't know, maybe I'm getting carried away. A lot of people saw, you know, the Rangers and the Eva game. They saw the turnout. They were wowed. And, and, and it appeared to people like if, if the fans can come to the stadium this way and we could have the buzz, everybody's talking uh, about Nigeria Premier Football League, why can't it be done on a regular? You know, that game shows that there is the potential. So what stops it from being the norm? 
is the norm in certain places. In Panama, people just don't care. So if you get 100 fans at the stadium, I think the club is excited about 150 fans. In New York, people don't care. If they get 700 fans in New York, they're probably excited. Uh, so it, it depends on where. In Ibadan, children start filling up their stadium almost every match day. In Enugu, Rangers fill up their stadium. In most towns in the north, in Kano, in Jos, in Gombe, they fill up the grounds. At my at, uh, at my degree, they fill up the grounds and all of that. No, but the thing now is that the clubs are not doing enough to push the game out there to the public. A lot of things you see, even the Oriental Derby, it was mostly from influencers, sport influencers, that is, you know, um, league followers of social media that pushed it to, for, to the world to see. The thing now is that do the clubs really understand that football is more than just the three points at stake? The more you understand it, then we're going to get a better, uh, better, better turnout in our games. I mean, for adults, I don't want to watch United games. Our voices are almost echoing at the stadium. Because people are in their houses. But whose job is it to ensure that they have their own fans? Clubs need to have fans. But do the clubs want these fans? And that's where the problem lies. So, what we saw the Oriental Derby, Rangers, and Aimba, it's not the first time we have had, well, not that massive, that I mean, the stadium was overcrowded, but it's not the first time Rangers have filled their stadium this season. Shooting have filled their stadium loads of times. Same as in Gombe, same as in Kano. Yeah, but what's the club doing about ensuring that it's out there for the world to see? That's why we have a problem. Mm. China, good to have you join us again. Let's talk about Rangers International. That's a powerhouse where you talk about league football in Nigeria. But I think in the last five seasons, they went to sleep, did some rebranding. Now they are back. They've won the league title. With what you saw um, of the Flying Antelopes this season, do you think they are truly back, or is just is this just a flash in the pan? You can't tell, really. We saw Rangers win the league in 2016. Same thing. Same turnout. Most of their games are played on Friday night. Most of their games are live on TV. Yeah, they kept on winning and winning, and they won the league in 2016. What happened in 2017? They couldn't manage the success of the past year. We saw them falter. The coach was sacked. Then that was when they, they went down. And now they are rebranding again. Now, you know the test of character when you can manage success. Mm. Now, the last Rangers League title was 2016, eight years ago. They won the title now. Let's see what happens next season. Can they manage the success of this season? Again, I think they're jumping the ship. They're jumping the gun. Let's allow them to enjoy their victory, their league title. They will now see what their plans are. But for fan turnout, they're doing enough. For visibility, they're doing well enough. I see what the general manager is doing. Amobi is doing a lot to bring, you know, to bring eyes back to Enugu. He's doing all of that. But again, playing the Champions League, playing the league, playing the FA Cup, it's a burden on lots of clubs. Financial burden, emotional burden. It, I mean, it's a big burden. When they start the season next year, we'll know how much they can manage this success. But for now, I think Rangers have done enough, and I'm impressed with what I've seen. We have a champion. But trust me, the race to finish second, third, and fourth is also intense. And if you look at teams that are in the top four, uh, Rangers champion, there's Ramon Stars, Rainbow Shooting Stars, play two in fifth, Lobby in sixth, Lobby can still make it to the top four, um, shoot, uh, play two United can also make it to the top four. But with what you've seen of Shooting Stars, do you think they will, they will let go of that position? Shooting at fourth right now. Now, for Shooting to finish in top three or in second or third, they need to win at home to Sporting Lagos and hope mm. that both Ranger, both Aimba and Real Stars drop points. That's so right. it's, a long, it's a long shot for them. Aimba need to win at home to Plateau United and hope that Real Madrid drop points at home to Katsina United. All Real Stars need to do is win against Katsina United and they're the second place team in the league. So for Remo Stars, they have the destiny in their hands. Just win my game against Katina United. I'm second. I play the Champions League. For Aimba, they need to win and hope for Remo to drop points at home mm. to Katina. Very unlikely. Mm. Shooting Stars, they need to win against Sporting Lagos. And they are now hoping for both Rangers and Remo Stars to drop points. Both of these teams are at home. Yeah. So, me, I, I don't see what chance Shooting Stars have to finish in top three. You know, but wow. for Aimba, they are going, they going to be hopeful. And having in mind that Sporting Lagos, they are also 
fighting not to get relegated. So that's an interesting Southwest derby. We cannot wait to see it. It's sports tonight on Channels Television. We have China Achero with us, but we need to go on this quick break. Now, when we come back, the race to stay in the league, the relegation battle is almost intense as that of the top four. Which other two teams will go down? China Achero will tell us when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back to Sports Tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channels television. We're taking a look at arguably the most competitive league football in the world. That's the Nigeria Premier Football League. Enugu Rangers are champions, but on the final match day, there's still so much to play for. China Acheru is a top voice when you talk about analysis of the Nigeria Premier Football League, and he's with us live on the show from Port Harcourt. China, good job you did with the top four. Let's go to the relegation battle now. Um, make me understand what's really going on, because I, I know just two more teams need to draw, but in everything you're doing in your analysis, try not to sound like Aqua United will not survive relegation. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, we know for sure that both Gombe United and Heartland are gone. They have been yeah. confirmed. That's now, right. I think, I think Doma United are pretty much gone. Because for Doma to survive, they must yeah. win at home to Abia Warriors by 16 goals to nothing. Sure. And they don't just have to win 16 goals to nothing. They have to win by 16 goals and hope that both Bielsa United, Sporting Lagos, and Aqua United drop United. Right. Mm. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So I would say Doma United, gone. Now, the fourth relegated team, that's a fight between Aqua United, Sporting Lagos, and Bielsa United. That's Aqua right. will be home to Rivers United. If you ask me, I think Aqua will win that game. Rivers have yeah. nothing to play for. Mm. So I think Aqua is safe. Now, that leaves us with Sporting Lagos and Bielsa United. Both are away from home. Sporting Lagos are away at Shooting Stars, yeah. while Bielsa United are away at Bendel Insurance. Oh. Now, listen, both teams have to win and hope the other does not win. <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, listen, Shooting Stars still have a shout to be in top three, even though that destiny is not in their hand, right? Yeah. Uh, for insurance, they have nothing to play for. So, if, uh, for me, the action spots in the league on Sunday are in, are in Benin, in Ibadan. At Remo Stars, and of course in Aba, talking about the top three battle and the relegation battle. But between Sporting Lagos and Bielsa United, one of them will not be playing NPFL football next season. Don't ask me who. I have no idea. <laughs> I know. I'll hand you over to you, Amin Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, interesting discussion we're having. Uh, Baba Jide is with me uh, in the Lagos. So you've listened to, to China and you, you were nodding, uh, uh, you know, all the while uh, it was speaking. Do you have any views different from... Uh, let's even look at the teams. We're, we're going to look at the final round of matches in a bit, but the, the, the permutations and maybe the calculations... Which of the teams do you see dropping? Which of the teams do you think will pick uh, the third, uh, second third spot uh, in the league? Okay, so um, it's been a while that we had this photo finish for the NPFL. You see, just one game and then you are still taking your calculators to um, see who gets the second. Yes, we understand Rangers have already won the league, but you know, second spot, third spots, then you still have as much as five teams still in that relegation water as much as so um it's been a while that i've observed um npfl to have this kind of um so it's going to be a, a beautiful weekend and um i don't know you're very, you're very i, I do careful. not want um uh, sporting lagos maybe because i have friends in, in the team but then i am in lagos but anything is possible over the weekend. All right. Is this anything is possible over the weekend? And as we say in sports, maybe the best team win. We'll see what happens. Of course, we'll be here to talk about it. Let me quickly go across uh, week 38 matches in the Nigeria Premier Football League. Uh, of course, the, the set of matches that will end it all. We already have a winner. We have two teams that have confirmed to be relegated. But on the final day, 
a few things will be decided. And what will decide those things are the matches we're going to be looking at. So I'll just quickly go across. And of course, we'll talk about the matches. Final league games, Aqua United will take on Rivers United, Brendel Insurance up against Bielsa uh, United, Doma United up against Abia Warriors, Aimba up against Plachi United, Gombe United will try on uh, Enugu Rangers for size. They've already won, uh, so I'm not sure they're going to have any motivation to do uh, anything spectacular. Calopiles will be up against Lobby Stars. Quara United uh, will take on Heartland. Niger Tornadoes will be up against the Akure Gunners. We're talking about Sunshine Stars in there. Remo Stars will take on Casino United. And of course, uh, the uh, Molile Warriors Shooting Stars will take on Sporting uh, Lagos. Uh, interesting matches uh, in all of uh, these and, and of course uh, China is still with us uh, and of course he's, he's made some predictions we'll see how all of these things will go uh, but I, I want to quickly ask you a question before we wrap all of these things up Th there's a trend of course Rangers will go on the continent a few teams will go on the continent but there's a trend that, that I've seen we've observed a team wins the league goes on the continent struggles and they're not able to replicate what they've done in the league the next season. They'll have to wait a season or two. Do you think it's going to be different with Rangers? I hope it will be different with Rangers. I mean, the general manager, Amo Bezak, has done so much. He seems quite an intelligent uh, young man and very powerful. I hope he'll be the same. A lot of the men and grand team win the league or qualify the play on the continent. They all of a sudden believe the team that took them that far was useless or not good enough. They basically overhaul their team. They are a group of players for the past 15 years in Nigeria. We call them continental players. They live by playing on the continent. So they move from club to club playing on the continent. And these clubs, you know, they get phased by the fact that we are playing continental, as we say it. They want to get certain players. So by the time a club playing on the continent, imagine a team like Rangers who have played so well this season, or a club like Aimba who have played so well this season adding like 10, 12 players to their ranks, is going to completely disrupt the team. That will happen a lot of times. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Now, if they can keep their head, if they can have faith in their coach and in their players, if they can get the management right, the finances right, the logistics right, because winning is not just about scoring goals and, and getting three points. A lot of things are involved. From the government angle, transportation, logistics, you know, payment of match bonuses, you know, everything is, is, is one big, you know, uh, one big organization that, that has to be put together. If they can get that right, all this will complement the coaching and the players on the pitch, and they can go very far on the continent. So if they can get all of this right, then they're going to do well. I'm hoping they do well because it's about Nigeria. But in times past, we've understood that a lot of Nigerian clubs, they just don't get right on the continent because it's a whole different ball game. That playing in the league. All right. Uh, let me allow Austin to throw one more in yeah. before we let you go. Yeah, China. Uh, let's do one for the development of the league. With everything that you've seen this season, what are the ways we can consolidate? Because we'll be talking about the challenges, but with what you saw um, for next season, what, what ways can the league improve so that we can actually have our teams on the continent play the sort of football that I want to see. One, I think we need better TV. Two, I think mm. we need more educated, more educated fans. I'm not talking mm. fans that insist their team must win at home because this kind of makes these players lazy because they always try to think they can get favors from referees at home because of pressure from fans. So I think we, mm. we need better TV. We need uh, more educated fans. Um, we need a league. The league did well. The MPL, the league body, body did well. They, were, they did not waste time in polishing teams that had. We need right. more of that. We need yeah. more of that. You know, but most of all, we need the clubs to understand. And when I say the clubs, I'm talking about from the state governments to the sports commissioner, to the general manager, to the fans, to the players, to the media. We need to understand that this league we are playing is beyond the three points. Mm. And beyond the three points is a campaign that she would started many years ago. Somehow he couldn't sustain it. It's beyond the three points. Granted, it's okay to get three points. That's why we are playing. But football is about money, it's about entertainment, and it's about the three points. 
most of our clubs are all for the three points. They forget that they need to make money from the game. Yeah. And they need to have their fans entertained. Then the three points. If you can right. get these three together as one, you're going to have a much better league. So it's beyond the three points. Let's understand this first. I totally agree with you. And when you put those points together, that's when you actually make the football business. Thank you so much, China Achiru, for your time on the show tonight. We appreciate you. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Awesome. That's it. MPFL analyst China China Achiru speaking to us from Port Harcourt. Let me go to Babajide in Lagos. Babajide, what are some of the things you can add to what China talked about on ways we can improve the league? Okay, so um, I love the fact that this season we, we had um, good officiating. The officiating has been better. And um, also the publicity this, this season has been top-notch. And um, I see lots of conversation online. I see people talk. Even when you're having a, a regular conversation, you get people to um, talk about NPFL and all that. So... I think it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. And uh, kudos to LMC. And of course, even the NFF, because I know when some um, referees air, in no time, in two, three days, you get, okay, the response that, okay, this official has been suspended. So all these things are metamorphosed in helping people to understand that, okay, now we have a league. And um, hopefully we'll have a better season. But I like the fact that now we want to see this weekend, lots of venues you you are interested because you know it's still not over. We understand that Enugu Rangers have already won the league, yes, but it's not over until it's over. All right, I agree with you. A lot of interesting matches to be played across the country. Let's go to the Euros now. We're going to, we're going to Germany without traveling. Uh, we're remaining on our seats, but we're going to Germany now. And of course, we'll look at results of completed matches. Ukraine uh, put everything that's happening uh, in, in their country behind them and they fought back, fought back uh, to win. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there you have it. Uh, this one came as a surprise. Austin alluded to it earlier. Robert Lewandowski was on the bench, came on, nothing changed. Uh, Austria won 3-1 uh, against uh, Poland, uh, a game in Group D. Ukraine, I was referencing earlier, of course, defeated uh, Slovakia. Yaremchuk uh, scored one of the goals that ensured uh, that the boys, led by Sergei Rebrov, um, got the job Don uh, Rebrov, former player for Ukraine. Uh, Babaji, let me quickly get your thoughts. Ukraine had to dig deep, but then you have to be impressed by um, Austria because uh, they didn't bring David Alaba, the talisman. He's sitting on the bench, uh, but not playing because, because he's injured. Uh, but the guys just came together, got the job done on, on Poland. Yeah, like, like I said earlier, the Euros now, the, most teams play... Um, equal kind of football. As we speak, France are still struggling to get a goal against the Netherlands. And you see some of these things, teams struggled. Portugal had to do it, um, even with the whole star studded team, they had to find a way to um, get a way, defeat Austria. So it's, um, I think, I don't know if it's technology. Most teams are now at par. You, you, you make There's one nothing mistake. that separates. You make one mistake and um, you are out. France, they had it was own goal. Now they are playing Netherlands. It's 75 minutes as we speak, and they are still struggling, even with all the uh, whoever that they have right now. So, I think as time goes on, football, you you would just not know. And so the, the Ukrainians, uh, which was what I wanted you to talk okay. about, were, were you surprised they were able to get that win? I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. Ukraine, over time, they've tried as much as possible to improve improve the squad. And I still see them get to, uh, I see them get to a, a particular point in the knockout stage. And or, if they could go all the way. We'll see. Possibly. We'll see. Andrew Vichenko was already also in on the stands. All right, six years. Uh, let's start with what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. Belgium, smarting from the loss in their opening game, will be up against Romania. We'll see what happens in that one. Georgia will be up against uh, the Czech Republic, and Turkey will be up against Portugal. Turkey uh, won their first game. Uh, let me go to Austin quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, that, of course, uh, you're doing two things uh, at the same time. You're with us. 
but you're also not with us because you're watching what's going on uh, between those two powerhouses. Then on Sunday, Scotland against Hungary, Switzerland will take on Germany. This might be the true test for the German machine. All right, let me go to Austin now. I'll hear it quickly. Uh, what's happening? We know 75 minutes, there's still go less. Uh, France and the Netherlands. Your thoughts on the matches played today? Yeah, um, it's now 78th minutes in that game between France and the Netherlands. In the 65th minute, Antion Griezmann got a chance to finish it off, but he lacked the composure, you know, I think it was body positioning, and he didn't put the sort of power that he needed to put on that ball, and goalkeeper came out right on time to stop it. Uh, Usman Dembele didn't actually step up the way he was expected, because when you don't have Kylian Mbappe in the team, and you have a chance to play, then you must go out there and prove a point. He's been replaced by Kings, the Coleman is still goalless. This French team, they must be careful. I say this because... As it is now in that group D, if it ends goalless, Netherlands will be on four points, France will be on four points, Austria is now on three points. So it makes that group one that really get us talking as we approach the final day. But let's talk about tomorrow's matches. I talked about it in my opening. Group E, Belgium must win or win against Romania tomorrow. Now, no excuses because Slovakia... Um, the Ukraine did the job against Slovakia today by winning two goals to one. So Slovakia, Romania, and Ukraine, they all have three points in that group. Belgium sits at the bottom with zero points. They need to win tomorrow to keep hopes alive at the Euros. They have no excuse. They cannot even afford to play a draw tomorrow. And we want Romania did it in the first game. They'll be saying to themselves, okay, if we can just go out and get the three points or even a draw and stay safe, then they can actually execute that and Belgium will be in big in big trouble. Because I look at that Belgian team, Yemi, and I just couldn't understand what's going on. Talents everywhere. And we've seen this over and over and over again with Belgium. What is it that when they need to win, they will fizzle out? I've told them to try not to watch the replay of that game, of that opening game to Slovakia, because they can strangle the video assistant referee for cancelling those two goals scored by Lukaku. But I think they were right calls. And now, against Belgium, they need to, against, um, in their match tomorrow, against Romania, they need to sing the redemption song. Let's go to Group F. I think Czech Republic will do just enough to beat Georgia. Um, so, they can actually have some relevance. I thought they were pretty decent in their opening game against Portugal when Lucas Provost scored that start out of a goal. It was Czech Republic all the way till they got the goal. But when Lunak scored that own goal, I said, hmm, Portugal might just turn around and steal it. And that's what the Portuguese team did. They went on to win two goals to one. Now, Czech Republic beat Georgia, they will get into the conversation in that group. The big game tomorrow is Turkey versus Portugal. Turkey did a good one over Georgia in their first game, won by three goals to one. Portugal defeated Czech Republic by two goals to one. But when you look at this Portuguese team, you want to quickly say, no chance for Turkey. But then again, if you go back to the qualifiers and see the form and the way Turkey approached the qualifiers, then you don't want to write them off easily because they were in the same group that had Croatia and they topped that group. And Croatia carried that bad form right into the Euros. So, I mean, this is football where anything can happen. I just can't come out now and say, oh, because it's Portugal and they've got all of the big names. They'll run over Turkey. Ah, we saw it. We saw it against... Um, Belgium, Slovakia, we saw Austria almost punished France. Don't forget, it was own goal that France used to win, to win that game. And then today they showed us that, look, we're not here to play. This is the Austrian team. Ralph uh, Rangnick has been doing a decent job with that team. Before the Euros, they went on an unbeaten run. They've now done their part by beating Poland today just so they can still stay in the conversation in the Euros. I love what's happening. It's getting intense. Let the games continue, Yemi. All right, let the games uh, continue. Our parting shot on the show tonight will be the Copa America, the extended, uh, expanded Copa America. Uh, but let me get Baba Gini talking after I take this result. Argentina started it off. Um, all the tough talk and all the, the from the Canadian coach 
which di didn't happen. Uh, Lataro Martinez and his strike partner Alvarez got the goals for Argentina. Babajide, were you expecting anything different? No, 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 not, not at all. For for Argentina yesterday, I ex though I expected Messi to get a goal. Um, uh, like I say, he's already in, in the twilight of his career, just mm -hmm. like Ronaldo. But you know, nothing to take away from the goat himself. Um, Maybe he will come back into the competition like the Messi that we used to know. But I feel age is beginning to tell on mm -hmm. him. You can't talk about the Copa America now, still not talk about Messi. So let's hope um, for him, if he could still make the statement, then it's fine. And of course, I expect Brazil to also um, give that tournament a run. For All right. Especially for players like Vinicius Jr. All right. So on Saturday's fixtures, you have Peru uh, up against Chile, Ecuador up against Venezuela. Trust me, this competition, these teams, is always close. It doesn't matter who is on form. So uh, Peru, Chile, uh, Ecuador, Venezuela, where will you be tilting? I think Chile, Chile should, should do it a, a, a ahead of um, Peru. I think so. Ecuador, Venezuela. Venezuela. Me, yes. All right. All right. I'm allowed to sit on the fence. All right. Let me yield to Austin. That's probably going to be our party shot uh, on the show. Um, okay. You also have fixtures for Sunday, Mexico against Jamaica, and of course, the United States against Bolivia. Interesting matches uh, to uh, be played. Austin, your thoughts quickly. Yeah, it's the Copa America. Um, I like the vibes that we saw yesterday. I like the fact that people are now saying, oh, Messi cannot play again. Oh, Messi wasn't outstanding in that game against Canada. All of those conversations will continue until maybe the second game or the third. That football spirit just lands on him. And we, we now know that this is King Messi that we're talking about. But with the fixtures, I would say particularly that one, uh, against USA and Bolivia, I would like to say Mexico, Jamaica, the, the reggae boys, they seem to have been doing so much with their football in the background. I was opportune to speak to the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and he said the government is investing so much on men's football and women's football. You know, so let, let's see what they do uh, when they also open their campaign. But with what we saw in the opening game, Argentina proved it again. Yeah, me, I said it on the show that you just need some influential players on the team. And I think that's what Messi's presence does to them. Whether or not it plays to our expectation, the fact that he's in that team makes them a winning team, Yemi. All right, I guess uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. That's the much uh, we can uh, take. Uh, Austin, uh, give us a situational report in the game currently going on. And of course, we have to wrap it up from there. Yeah, we have to wrap it up. So in the 68th minute, the Dutch team actually thought they got a goal. They were celebrating it and running around until the video assistant referee said, wait a minute, let me check. Check was done and that goal was chopped off. And now in the 85th minute and still the Netherlands zero, France zero. And that will make that group a very interesting one to monitor as we approach the final round of group matches. That's the show. In London, I'm Austin O'Connor, but in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now. It's a wrap here in Lagos. Before we go, I want to thank Baba GD or Eva for his time yes, on thank the show. You. Thank Hopefully, you, we'll do thank this again so some other yes, time. Yes, definitely, definitely. All right. Thank That's you. the show for today. It's the last one for the week. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back here again next week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now.